Those of you who are familiar with the history of Guest House will recall that its founder, Austin Ripley, was motivated by a strong Catholic faith, as well as personal gratitude for his own daily reprieve from the insanity of active alcoholism. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, Riff, as he was known, noted with concern the apparent failure of AA to reach and hold alcoholic priests. They would come and they would go and disappear and frequently die. Recognizing this particular need, Rip set in motion an institution that has contributed to the lasting sobriety of the vast majority of the more than 6,000 priests and religious that have been guests of Lake Orion or Rochester, Minnesota since 1956. Now what do you suppose can grease the skids for a priest or a brother? What are some of the features of a clerical culture that might make it easier for a priest or religious who is predisposed to addictive behavior to toboggan down the slippery slope of active alcoholism? Two manifestations are worthy of mention. The first is the central role that alcohol has played in the lives of priests and religious in many parts of the world. Preprandial happy hours and late night drinking sessions form part of the daily routine of the first communities in which I lived. An obligatory happy hour was an important feature of most clerical gatherings. Of course, the majority of clerics do not find that easy access and frequent exposure to alcohol poses any problem whatsoever for them. For some of us, however, the availability of booze, together with a tacit blessing to imbibe daily, proved to be, at the beginning, a well-deserved reward, then a daily requirement, and finally, a deadly obsession. Although I've lived outside the country for most of the past two decades, I have the impression that today alcohol is less central to the culture of priests and religious in the United States. Parties, provincial chapters, assemblies, and other gatherings of clerics and religious no longer appear to be occasions for heavy drinking. An observation which leads me to ask a soul-disturbing question. Is it possible the guest house has successfully rounded up the last of us drunks? <laughs> Don't think so. There's another characteristic of clerical culture that I believe still provides a matrix in which all sorts of unhealthy behaviors may flourish. I refer to the anonymity of priestly and religious life built on an ethic of politeness that allows pathological manifestations to progress relatively unchecked. By the time a competent authority becomes aware of the severity of the problem, the afflicted person is already in the grip of a full-blown alcoholism or other types of addiction. 